Hi guys, welcome to this session on Microsoft Project. In this module, I want to show you how you can get going with Project. I'm going to create a simple task list, link the tasks together, and add some resources. Very, very basic, but a good starting point for Microsoft Project. So first of all, I've opened Project, and I've got a blank screen. Now, this task mode area, I have set my task mode. If I go to the File tab, and down into options and schedule I've set all new tasks to auto schedule that saves quite a bit of time and I'll show you the difference between that and manual which is the other one in there when we get going so I always recommend that people set that to auto scheduled just click OK for that and then I'm just going to go title so this is going to be software implementation that's the title and then I'm gonna have a few steps now because I set that to the automatic scheduling I automatically get this information populated and a a small bar on the Gantt chart area down the bottom there it says new tasks are auto scheduled now if I set that to manual just to show you what happens if it's manual and then just pull that down and then just type test for example when you just have it on manual, you don't get any of this information and you have to put that in yourself. So if that's how you want to do it, that's great. But I'll just put that back to the way I had it. Now, when you first open project, you come to this view. This is what's called a view. It's called a Gantt chart view. This is actually the Gantt chart and this is a table part of that Gantt chart. Now, in terms of tables, you have many, many tables that are available in Microsoft Project, and you can create your own table there. And if I just quickly show you the table area, so I've gone to the View tab, and then you've got the tables here. You can see the ones that I've created, and this is the one we're in at the moment. That is the default table, basically called Entry, because that's where you are entering data. You've got Costs and all these other ones, and then you can do more tables, and that's for another time. But let's just get some tasks on this screen. So, uh, software implementation. So install software room one press and enter you see the information comes in and we'll change that test software room one and train on on room one and then room one complete that's um, all we're going to do for this basic one now you can see that the um, the start and finish and things like that are a bit wrapped. I've just widened this column so they're no longer wrapped. Now, I want to do install software room 2. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy these four. Copy, control C, and then just paste them underneath and just edit them slightly. Obviously, this now needs to be room 2. Now, this bar at the top, which is similar to the formula bar in Excel, is not on by... Um, well, there's a typo. I'll just, see, this is what happens if you try and double click on something like you can in Excel. So that needs to be activated at the top, and then you can do a little tick. And then I need to fix that one because that needs to say room one. And then that's room two complete. And then the whole project's complete. Now, what you put in your task list is totally up to you, but you've got to be bearing in mind that you will have to edit it, or somebody's going to have to edit the, the, the tasks. So writing a big massive list here sometimes is counterproductive, and people then don't um, do it properly. So what I want to do now is I want to indent all of these tasks under this title. So I'm just going to highlight all of these tasks, go back to the task tab, and select indent this one. Now, as soon as I do that, this top one goes bold and it picks up the duration. At the moment, the duration is just one day because everything is going on at the same time. But if I just type one in there, it just default today. You shouldn't really leave the question marks on there. Then this planning wizard comes up when you type the same figure over and over again. You can get it to stop coming up, but I recommend you leave that on. It's a good little tip. It's basically saying you could have pulled that down. Uh, I know that, like you can in Excel, so it's, it's like this little black cross that you can get on the corner, if you can find it there, 
and they can just pull it down. But this one is going to be a zero. It's a milestone, and that's the symbol you get for a milestone. So this is one day, one day. The planning wizard is going to come up now. One day. Press and escape to get rid of that. Zero, zero. Now you can see all the, the tasks are sitting there on the um, date. Now this is a Saturday that I'm doing this on. So these have gone on to, these have stayed on the beginning of Saturday. These have all gone on to Monday because Saturday is obviously not a working day. Now what I need to do is change the start of this project so it's not a Saturday and it starts on Monday the 8th. So to do that you need to go to the project area and you could have done this first off to be honest and selected a start date so I'll select the 8th as a start date. You've got the option in here to say whether this is going to be from scheduled from a start date or a finish date. The only difference is this becomes active or not whichever one you pick. So that's all I want to show you in this, uh, this little box for now. Um, there are other things in there that are quite useful to know about, but that's for a different session. Click OK to that. And now everything sits neat. Now I want to link these together. To link them together, we need to use, we need to um, go back onto the task tab. We need to use this little tool or we can type them. So if I highlight everything just to show you, click that link, that chain link, you get them all linked together, following on one after the other. But I don't want it to be a follow on coming like that. That's like a critical path, so they would all go red if I set that to critical. So if I go onto the um, uh, view tab, not view tab, format tab, and critical tasks, they all go red. Now, let's get rid of all them because I don't want that. They all stay red because they're all going on at the same time. But let's do it manually. So I'm going to type in there two. Test follows install. Three, train follows test. And four, two, three, four, like a little set of steps. They've gone red. These are still blue because these basically can go happen anytime between this period. So they're not critical. Now, same with this one. I'm going to miss this one out and just do the same sort of step there. So test is following that. So it's six. Seven, eight. So I've got myself two sets of steps. Now the project complete is going to be following um, five and nine. So for that, I need to put put five, comma nine, like so. Now this one, install software room two. I'm going to change the type. These so far, when I've typed this, are just doing follow ones. When this task finishes, that one follows on. But there are four types of um, predecessor links I can do. So this one is going to be a start to start. I want this task, install software room 2, to start or be dictated by the start of this task. So this task will start when this one starts. To tell the computer that, you need to put 2SS in there. And I'll show you where I got the SS from in a second. You can see the arrow coming out of task 2 pushing into task six. And if I move task two forward, everything gets pushed forward in this group. And these are just follow ones anyhow. So this is pushing all of this. I'll just do undo to come back. Now, why did I type two SS? If I go double click into install software room two, go onto the predecessors tab, you can see the, the full name of it there. And there's a link to the other type. So this is the default one, finish to start. Then you've got the one I've just done there. You've got finish to finish and start to finish. So I'm just going to concentrate on these two for today. Start to start, click OK. So now I'm happy with the links. I want some information on this Gantt chart. So if I double click in the white area, I get this box coming up because in this box I can obviously see all the colours of all the bars that come on, that appear on here, different things, but I can also change the text that's displayed on here. So if I go to text and on the right, if I type the letter 
N, it comes up with name, and if I click OK to that, it should put the names on. Now, the reason it hasn't done that straight away is because I've got critical tasks ticked. Take that off, and then do it on there. Go back in and do it again. It's got resource names. If I put name, OK, it puts the name on. Now, if I go back in and show you that again, if I wanted the names to be on when the critical tasks is, is there, I would have to make sure I select on the critical task bar, which I haven't done. So if I cancel that and put that tick back on, critical tasks, and then that should appear in this list. There. And then the name is there. So just be careful you don't get caught out. So these are all different sort of um, bars that you can do it on. So I've just made sure... I've selected that one and I've got name on it both now so it doesn't matter uh, I didn't change the milestone one I just did it for the actual basic task so that's okay I like that now to allocate resources I need to go onto the resource sheet down here and type in my resources so I'll go for Bob and Bill and Ben just because that's the easiest to type I'll go paper, Microsoft Office, computers, and hotel, just because I so I can show you the different ones. Now, paper is not a work resource because there's three types there. Look, work, material, and cost. This is going to be material, and so is Microsoft Office, and so is computers. And it's telling me again that I could have pulled that down. That's going to be a cost resource. Now, for material, you can put a label on there. So I'll go pack. This is what's going to appear on the Gantt chart. MSO for Microsoft Office. And PCs for computers. For people, you can give them... So I could have put the full name there, but just for this example, I'm just going to keep it simple. But you could put in there trainer so he's in the trainer group um, let's say all three of them are trainers and then Ben can be the manager 100% of time available that they're on the project now they pay £10 an hour because we don't like giving people loads of money and £15 an hour over time they'll highlight those two they're all on that and let's say the Ben the manager can be on £20 an hour and 25 for overtime so paper let's say paper per use if I put it in there is one pound per pack Microsoft Office every time you use it it's going to cost you a hundred quid so every time you allocate it to a task it's costing a hundred quid computers um, let's say you've got some agreement that you you can get one computer or ten computers it doesn't matter how many you have it's just a fixed cost of 200 pounds there so every time you allocate a computer or ten computers it's going to cost you 200 pounds now the cost resource you don't get the option to put a price in here it just stays as zero and then you allocate the the cost when you are um, adding this to your tasks so if I go back to the Gantt chart over here and click on the task that you want to assign and then go to the resources tab and you get your assigned resources from here You've, there's other ways of doing this but I like to do it from here if I assign Anne to this task and Ben to this task and then two computers so that I need to put that to two still stays at 200 because it's a fixed cost paper assign so there's two of them let's say they use a pack of paper each so two per hour so what I need to not do it there just over type the wrong place just type that back in so I need to get into here and go two forward slash per hour that's gone up to 16 because there's eight hours and there's two of them 16 and then um, Microsoft Office I need two of them assign two licenses so that should go up because it's a hundred pound per use now I'll just close this for a minute because all that stuff that I've just done there is in this column as well 
Now if I change the table view to have a look at the impact of that cost table, you can see that what that's cost me. If I go back onto the resources and put this resource box, you can also see it in there, but it summarizes it here because it was indented. Now if I change the table back to entry, so it's up to you whether you do this in the entry table or the cost table, whatever it's whatever you want to look at. But let's just do one more and then you get the idea. So let's say Bill. Now I'm type I'm fixing that typo there, Bill. And let's have a quick look at the the resource sheet. So it fixed it there. So if you delete something in this box, it affects this box or this column. So be careful. So if I go and test software room two and let's say um, Ben's going to do that, assign Ben, he's the manager, and he wants one computer, and he wants one copy of Microsoft Office, he wants one pack of paper per hour, so that's one forward slash HR, and that'll do. Now, he wants to stay in a hotel, so this is where I'm going to assign a hotel to him, so assign a hotel, and that's costing him 200 quid, like so. And I'll close this box, and there you go. So we've now got some costs. If I go back and look at the cost table, like so, so the hotel is attached to that task. Back to entry. So we've created a task list, we've linked it up, we've assigned resources. So that's just a very quick video to get you started with Microsoft Projects, and obviously there's a lot more you can do with that, and a lot more stages. So hopefully that was of use to you. Thank you for your time and I'll see you on the next one.